With the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, we get a new king, Charles III, her eldest son. And so that asks the question, if he's the third, then who was the second and first? I'm going to show you in this family tree I did on our ancestry and how the previous monarchs are all connected. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take historic portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life, as well as go through family trees to see how relatives are all connected. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more recreations and trees, and let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Charles I and II are in this part up here in the 1600s. Charles I was the father, Charles II was the son. This is the time of the English Civil War when Parliament kicked out the monarch, specifically Charles I, and then brought back his son after 11 years of unrest. Charles I was born in 1600 to 1649 in the House of Stuart, a Scottish royal house. His father was James VI of Scotland and first of England, and he got the throne because his mom was the famous Mary, Queen of Scots, Elizabeth I's cousin queen. So when Elizabeth I died with no heirs, it went to her father's sister's line, Margaret, whose granddaughter was Mary, Queen of Scots, who had James, who had Charles. A lot of things happened with Charles I. When he succeeded the throne, he thought of himself as the divine right of kings, and as such should govern in his own conscience. Well, Parliament at the time was trying to curb that, so you can imagine there would be lots of tension. On top of that, the religious heir was more Protestant than Catholic, so when he married a Roman Catholic, it generated mistrust with the Puritans. And finally, England had no more money. With all the wars from his predecessors, Elizabeth I and his father James, the treasury was empty. So he did these shady runarounds to try and collect money like bringing in these forgotten laws to get some change. For example, distraint of knighthood means that anyone who earns more than 40 pounds from their land has to come to his coronation to be knighted. If not, then you get fined. Another example is that he granted monopolies to people. You can imagine this not sitting well with the public. In fact, he lost popular support over public welfare issues and this affected thousands of people. As a result, with all this disagreement, he dissolved Parliament when faced with opposition, effectively ruling alone on a number of occasions. In his first four years of ruling, he dissolved Parliament three times and once for 11 years. He would only reassemble Parliament to raise funds when he ran out of money again because of expensive foreign wars. In a long story short, Parliament got fed up with him, he just wasn't cooperating and so they chopped off his head and made England a republic. So then, after a lot of transitional smoothing attempts, Oliver Cromwell comes to power and headed the government. It was a Puritan government and they wanted to purify the Church of England from Roman Catholic practices. You see, they believed that the Church of England was too similar to the Roman Catholic Church and that the Reformation was not complete until it became more Protestant. Basically, the Bible was their guide and they did things like close down all theaters because they were seen as toxic anti-entertainment environments and were now deemed as illegal performances. Oliver Cromwell dies and his son Richard gets into power, but he was very rash and could neither manage the parliament nor control the army, so he was kicked out by other radicals. It's now 10 years since the monarchy ended and by the end of 1659, England appeared to be drifting into anarchy with widespread demands for new elections and an end to military rule. Charles II, the exiled son, was sitting on the sides watching this chaos when this guy monk, a royalist, said, how about we try and get in on this? It might work in your favor. So monk marched into parliament and was like, I propose Charles II. He promises tolerance, leniency, and above all else, cooperation with parliament. And that's how Charles II gets the throne and he returns from exile. The restoration was accompanied by social change, Puritanism lost its momentum, and theaters reopened, Christmas and extravagance came back. His reign also included the Great Plague of London and the Great Fire of London, and all this seemed like a normal reign on the throne. But then Charles II gets into arguments with Parliament like his father. You see, they tried to ban his brother from succeeding him because he was Catholic. So Charles II gets fed up and disbands Parliament, making him an absolute monarch. He dies in 1685, age 58, having been on the throne for 25 years. Without any heirs, his Catholic brother James gets the throne. 337 years later, after having Georges, Edwards, a Victoria, and another Elizabeth, we now have Charles for the third time. When Princess Elizabeth ascended the throne on the death of her father, she was asked what name she wished to use as queen. She is said to have replied, my own name, of course, what else? Charles then decided to use his own name as his personal choice, just like his mother. 
And that brings us to the end of this video and a little bit on Charles I and Charles II. I hope you enjoyed it. You can see more about Charles II in my recreation video on him. The link's in the description and you can see the royal family tree here where I explain who got the crown and how it connects to Elizabeth II and the current royal family and how they're all related. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more family trees and recreations and I will see you in the next one.